The cattle industry, all would be affected when the line actually closed. Mission for emigrants coming from Dublin or Belfast. An adventure just to get to Pettigrew and to get to Loch Derrick before the railway arrived, but all of a sudden the railway was within about five miles of Loch Derrick. And it grew up a little industry. Today you have to be in the village before two o'clock, so any of the early trains of the day, the um, people disembarked and knew that, generally knew that they had five miles to walk, so it was about a handy or two. Um, Queen Victoria is the person who's responsible for uh, to brought the children to the seaside and then ran about on the sand, the sand castles and bathed in the sea water. And this was considered a very eccentric sort of thing to do up to that period of time. If you had talked to someone the night before, and literally be more to himself, and the best man that he could have been made, and that he had a mass of my big states, like uh, sugar, butter, and uh, whiskey, various other things, and then another man, you had uh, tea, and uh, so officially, the non-hired hens were laying a, a dozen eggs at a time instead of one. They might first be one of the old type of four queens. There was pans on the thing on the pan, and the mattress was set up in the day. So this is the pan But when you wanted to do this, you to smoke everything across the board of the pan. They took out the day, they took out the pan, and put it over. Good for smoking it as well, as we call it, uh, of, of, the, of the brown, and put everything back in place again, and uh, walked across the, the border, through the customer, and uh, everything was fine. And my customer might do this, and he could have meant to not be on a big fire or lose a big chat of them. And there was no doubt that what this out of him was jealous. I the trousers around here, and the coat covered them. And uh, although, uh, funny enough, the, the custom men, they never, they never uh, make you open the coat or, uh, they would have probably had no one what was going on, surely. You've got a pound of butter or a loaf of bread and you're carrying it down in, in a shopping bag. And if the custom man was there on the bridge, he would make you open the cost of your, your bag. And if he saw a pound of butter or a loaf of it, he took it off you. And I mean, there was no, there was no question to ask, he just took it and... There was no, uh, you didn't get a receipt or, or anything. And the way for it was fine, she put back the messages and the bicycle, which she never put back the one. Yeah, we're not even off the ball, 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 yeah, we're not even Should all acquaintances be forgot and never brought to mind, 
would have one trust before they close the end of steel and line. Farewell to Funtna Old Horse Town, we'll never see it more. Farewell to Funtna Junction, the good old spot. There are more to tell it. The junction to will send our greetings kind. We'll never see them once they close the end of steel and line. Farewell to Ball and Mother and to the end of and Town. They sit in a queenly grandeur with Loch Erin all around. The mountain and the lake scenery around it to his fame. It will be but a memory once they close the end of Skill and Lane. Now let us from the junction go to honour Erwin's town, then on to Kiesh where in the past Sheriff Custom's men were found. They seized our butter, sugar, jam, our whiskey and our wine. But now our greatest loss will be the Enniskill wine. And crossing our the border we come to Pedigal, a place of ancient pilgrimage, as everyone will know. Then on to Castle of Cobble, around the lakeside we will twine. What lovely beauty spots that grace the Anaskill Lane. Farewell to Bali Shannon and the border town Billick. The Sunday train will often keep us waiting half a week. Our last stop is from Dorn with its sea and sand so fine. We have paid our final tribute to the Anaskill Lane. was originally bought by a Mr. Bloomfield who owned the Bleak factory where they made the pots and the Bleak china. Yes, we all know that, don't we? Mm -hmm. He was the one who financed the railway <coughs> and it was running at a loss. It was not making any money from 1876 onwards. But because it was part of a huge railway network across Ireland, they were like covering the losses from the mines, <coughs> so it was not making any money whatsoever. In the summer it would be really, really busy, you get 600 pilgrims coming on the train in the morning, but nobody on it in the winter time, nobody at all. Eventually it was sold to both Ireland and Northern Ireland, they both had a share in it, 50% each. Ireland wanted to go ahead and invest more money into the railway to keep it going, but Northern Ireland said no. Now, during 1957, there was a policy by the government in Northern Ireland, and in the UK obviously, in the UK, where they shut an awful lot of railways, that was Beecham. They closed an awful lot of railways. So a lot of villages were then cut off from everybody else. And the plan was that it was cheaper to get your goods by lorry rather than by train because you'd have to if you if you're going by train you'd have to get the goods to the train and then the train would take your goods so far but then it would have to be taken from there to the shops. Whereas if it was in a lorry, your goods could go on the lorry and straight to the shop. Do you understand? <coughs> so consequently there was no money. There was no money to be made in it. And so they closed it. Do you think we're there I've asked this question. I even asked whether they could be like it is in England, because in England we have the same problem. And there is a line that only runs during the season, during summer. But as in England, it takes millions and millions of pounds to get the railway running again. It also takes a lot of a lot of retired men mainly work on these old railway engines to make them work again because obviously they've all been stored away now, so they're all falling falling apart. Well, you don't want new trains on old lines, but you know he's trying to get back to how it was in the old. Have you ever been on a steam train? Well, it was 
totally different. <coughs> totally different. Yeah. And my mum and dad used to work on the same train. Did they? What did you do? I'm not exactly sure. But you did it. Yeah. It's a lovely sound. When you go on a steam train, you actually hear the engine go psh, 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 as it gets going. It's a lovely. And the smell, the smell of the steam is, is amazing. It's an amazing experience. If ever you go to England, go on a steam train and you will see why people love it. But no, they'll never reopen it because what happened was the land that the railway track ran on was sold off for a little amount of money, pennies, it was sold off. And all the track was broken up and sold off. I know another reason why it gets sold off, because someone moved into the station, I think. That's right. Yeah, what happened was that the farmer bought the station, and then what happened was at the same time, virtually the same time, you had a creamery and you had a mill here, fully working. And both of those also closed down as a consequence, as a reason, because of the train stopping. So it knocked on to the other two. And then those two were also sold off. And then obviously the pilgrims didn't come here anymore. They were, most came from Galway, from the west of Ireland, and they were now getting the bus going directly there. So really Pettigo became very, very quiet and nobody had any reason really to come here, which is why it is as quiet as it was, as it is now. And then also there were shops, there are more shops here than there are now. They all closed down because there was nobody buying the goods because there were no pilgrims coming through. There were no holiday makers coming through anymore. Uh, That's right, that's why. But if you go, this is totally different, but if you go further back, Pettigo was, was even busier because it was, had a lot of cloth merchants here and people like that. It was very, very wealthy. If you look at some of the buildings along the high street, they're very posh houses for the time that they were built. So there was an awful lot of money in Pettigo. But unfortunately, once, as I say, yeah. If you look behind the station that's a house, would you still see like the train tracks? You can't actually see the wooden track. If you stand there, you can see where they were. And if it rains, out the of the day, you actually see the, the marks, you can see the puddles, where the tracks were. But you can stand on the platform, still, and look down it. And if you can imagine, um, there were so many pilgrims coming through that that platform would have benches all the way running from top to bottom. It also had a canopy running right the way across it as well. So um, it was very, very busy. And then you'd have all the milk churns there as well. You'd have your post coming through there. Then you'd have the cattle, yeah, from the market down there. They'd be sold. Then they'd, be, they'd wait their turn to get on the train as well. So they'd be taken away up to Derry. And then you also have the coal being taken to Bleak for the furnaces, for the pots. Yeah? Sorry. And my dad did a painting on it. Did he? What's yeah. his name? Joel Ryder. Really? Have to, is, he on, is he on the internet? Yeah, Irish art or something. I'll have a look. And um, the, he had the steam train on it and the... But the people that own the station is sitting on a, on like a crate and there's like all the pilgrims and the steam cabinets and steam the station. It's amazing, and all. isn't it? Amazing. Has anybody been to Enniskillen Museum? There is a museum in Enniskillen um, um, which has all the train memorabilia there. Because what happened was all the bits and pieces from the stations were just taken off. Everything was stripped off. And a lot of the signs and stuff, they're all in the museum if anybody wants to go and have a little look. My dad owns a thing in the railway station and a lot of people with dad races and some of them go into the field and look at the old big tracks. And That's everything. right, and the tunnels are still there, aren't they? Yeah, it's called around. That's it. That's it.
said, and they used a lot of the wood from the track to actually, because the, um, the wood was, weather, was weatherproof and waterproof, they used it for sheds, they used it for fences, so it was all reused. And the iron obviously was taken away and melted down, unfortunately. But it was a brilliant way for Balik to actually move its china, because it wouldn't break as easily as it would on a horse and cart or a carriage. So that's why the gentleman at the time wanted to use the railway to move his china to make sure it all arrived safely. Yeah. Yes. Um, behind the my house, um, uh, um, this field and at one point is straight, but then, um, but then it like goes um up and like the land goes exactly where it used to be. Really? So you've actually. You can see the railway track from your house? Um, well you can't see the track, but you can see... The, the dent? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's also a bit... Um, <coughs> if, you go, um, when, if you go to the field behind my house and you walk across where it used to be, then um, if you keep on walking, then there's still a bit left because it went like, over a uh, road. So right, so you've still got your, your tunnel? Tunnel. Yeah, very good. So it's so it's bits are left. Now it would be lovely, and I've said it would be great if we could have it opened again. But the chances of that are slim because people now own the land. And nobody's gonna give up their land for the railway. No. Yeah. And they spend billions and millions of pounds. But uh, it's not even a chance. I, I did ask whether they, they were thinking of opening a bit of the line between um, here and Belique as a walking, the Rambler Trail, the walking place, you know, nature trail. But that's going to take an awful lot of money. Um, they, uh, they resurrected the tracks in uh, Dublin. They have the Lewis in Dublin. They have all tracks, they resurrect them and put the trams back on the tracks and they call it the Lewis. And uh, that was a great idea. The way like old ideas sometimes are good ideas, and why people discard them is uh, it's kind of like a shame, isn't it? It is a shame. It, it upset me when I look back, because the stories, I've heard some very funny stories about nuns. I have. Now, you might be surprised by that, I know. But they were also involved in the smuggling. Now, it's hard to believe. <laughs> I know. But they would come, they were underneath their habits, they would strap butter, whiskey, <laughs> tea, sugar, and they were never searched, obviously. They were never searched because obviously nobody searches a nun, did they? And they'd get over the border that way. <laughs> and then there, were, there was one old lady who used to travel regularly. She was never stopped. And she used to carry a hot water bottle, but in those days they were pot, they were made of pot, they weren't rubber, they were, pot, they were pot. And she would fill it with whiskey <laughs> and take it over the border. <laughs> then she'd wash it out, fill it with tea this time, bring it back. There was somebody who actually came over the border smuggling on his bicycle. This is how desperate they were. And if you all know your bicycle, it's got a tube. It's got tubes, hasn't it? Where you and they were packed full of stuff like cigarettes, sugar, you name it, and they were stuffed in there. So not only did you have your baby sitting on the butter, because obviously in the bottom of the pram as we saw on the video, you'd lift your baby out, underneath the mattress you'd pop in all your naughty stuff that you shouldn't really have. And stick the baby on top and just hope and pray that nobody stops you on the on the border. I mean that's how <laughs> that's how desperate it was. And like he said, you would strap it. You would strap it to your body as tightly as you could. And then obviously a big overcoat on the top to make sure that nobody had a good look underneath. Um, <laughs> would they have been arrested if they were caught with loads of Yes, stuff? absolutely. And they'd have all their goods taken off them. There was one poor, one second, there was one poor lady who had absolutely nothing. She was as poor as a church mouse and she was 
she had, she used all her allowance that she had on some food. It wasn't a lot, bread, milk, cheese, whatever. The custom men took everything off her. Everything. She was left with nothing. That's how serious they were. Sorry, yes. And why were people doing that? Because they didn't they, they had to to live, as Violet was saying on there. They 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 need they wanted this they needed this stuff milk cheese the stuff that we take for granted it wasn't luxuries it wasn't luxuries it was it was it was bread yeah. it was you know it was very important food that they needed because a lot of the people around here were working on the farms you can't do that kind of labour without food you need the food granted cigarettes were a luxury granted you could get away without the whiskey I suppose but the tea and the sugar, and all of that, and the bread, mainly the bread. I mean, they needed it. My grandma used to smuggle stuff in in her bag. That's right. A basket thing. Yeah. And she used to put stuff on top of it, and she was never caught. Exactly. <laughs> See, a lot of the time, the customs men would overlook it and say, oh, that's not happening. Because they felt sorry for them. You know, they felt sorry for people. But... You see, it wasn't so bad until 1920. In the 1920s, that's when Ireland was split from Northern Ireland. And that's when the border came in. And that's when the trouble started. That's when sugar was available that side, and it wasn't available this side. And then on top of that, you had the war rationing. So, <laughs> what are you going to do for food? Sorry, you want to try something over here? Why couldn't they like, just buy it on the other side of the border? They could, and they did. But the thing is, they couldn't bring it back over without paying. They had to pay a lot of money to bring it back over. There was one gentleman I was talking to who had his wedding over the border, and he couldn't bring his wedding gifts back unless he paid an enormous sum of money because it wasn't allowed. Um, was bread counting um, was bread counting as smuggling? Yes. Um, well, I don't want you to get any way of spread. It could make your tummy look bigger, but your head could be really small, so it looks suspicious. Why not put it on your body and look like you would have a big booty? <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yes, why not do that, Jack? Why not do well, that? Well, you'd be surprised what they tried. I mean, they put it in their shoes, they put it, you know, anywhere they could stuff it. They stuffed it. That's fine. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, this is my um, it's a bit off topic, but it's the sort of it. Um, you know, you're not allowed to drive with your phone. And um, this guy baked cookies in the shapes of iPhones, and then when he was stopped by the police, he took a bite out of it and said, "Our cookies are legal." <laughs> <laughs> Who was next? Yes. Uh, you know the way you're talking about like the troubles and all. My granddad owns a farm, and there was a boy. There's this gate, and then there's kind of a wall beside it, and there's a man hiding behind the wall with a gun. And um, this car came around the corner, and the man shot, and it went straight through the gate and came out the other side and then through the car and killed the man. And the gate's still there, and you can still see the yeah. bullet mark in the hole yeah. through it. There was also an explosion, wasn't there, up by the bridge as well, wasn't there? <coughs> During the troubles, I believe. And then and the and, uh, she remembers the, like, the cotton and all coming through the town and stuff. It's not very nice. That's why I try to, to avoid the troubles, because obviously um, it's not a nice subject to talk about. No, really. it's not a nice topic. So who's, who's next? Would people smuggle anything like dangerous? No, no, no. It was it was flour, bread, eggs. Um, it wasn't anything dangerous. No, it wasn't nasty stuff. But it was it was stuff that you needed to live on. That's why the ladies carried it, the mums carried it, the babies carried it. You know, you'd strap it to your baby if if possible. Do you know what I mean? That's why you had to do it. Um, my granddad told me um, there was a woman and she tried to bring over wellies and yeah. she put them up her top. Yeah. And when the customer man asked her what was up her top, she said she was pregnant. <laughs> and, um, That's she, it, isn't it? That's it. I mean, what can you do? What can you do? Uh, during uh, the troubles, uh, my mum and her sister 
they were up in a field walking a bike and they heard gunshots and then mum remembered what her mother told her if you ever hear gunshots jump down in the grass and get as long as you can. Yeah, not very nice, not very nice. Mm. Yeah? And you know what they saw? Why didn't they just like eat this stuff and then go back? That's a good idea. Yes, yeah, but the thing yeah, is, yeah, then what about the poor family at home? What about you, your your mum or your dad or yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. Bring bring them all over. And get all Would that last you for a week? One meal? Would that last you for a week? There was one, I couldn't get it on the video because I had to keep this video very, very short. But um, there was one story about somebody, Paddy McAndrew. He's the of Grandin. Yeah. He, he told me that somebody loved their tea, loved their tea, so much that they loved their tea, is that when they got their ration of how much tea they could have for a week, he made the strongest, blackest tea he could make and he used it all in one go drank it down that was it no more tea for a week <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he couldn't he forgot to bring the thing that you'd set them on so he got a co hanger or, or like the thing you'd put a wardrobe on I mean not a wardrobe <laughs> <laughs> Put one of those, and as it went up, it was too heavy that the fireworks was hovering in the air, making loads of vibes, oh, no. during the troubles. And they just sort of like, as that happened, like every, they just sort of ran because well, they thought it was gunshots. Oh yeah. no! So they they knew, then them two knew what it was, and then when they got home, like their parents were saying like. Where were you because of all the gunshots that they heard, but that was them with the fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh no, yes. Then why didn't the customers <coughs> go through with just making a little No, they weren't allowed any. Because they thought if you let one through with a little bit, then somebody will try and for it take a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, and then yeah. there'd be no stopping it, yes. My brother Shane, he's in secondary school and he wouldn't survive like a week without tea because he loves it so much. Well, he'd be on the border then trying to get some over, wouldn't he? He's like, he'd he's be like there me. smuggling it in. Yeah, he's like me, so he's like me, so I love tea. Yes. But, uh, yeah, just. Um, yeah. I think it was doing the like, troubles, but um, I think there's my granny owns, a, well, it's actually my uncle now that owns it, but there's a pub across the way from my house and I think I remember hearing that there's a bomb dropped on the road, um, like right in front of it, and there's a massive crease in it there. Yeah, not nice at all. That's why I didn't really bring that into my film because there's some horrible things that happen that we need to move on from. Not forget, not forget, but move on from. Mm -hmm. uh, there was this here woman from Guidor and and uh, she would she like made butter because you could get butter on or the like the over here but in the north you couldn't or <coughs> you get tea in the north you couldn't get That's right, tea. yeah. It gets confusing and but yeah. She would always go over and sell butter and she now she went and dispersed to ban and she she not put on door no man. She was selling to a woman in bed in her room and dead tea, so they did. And she loved tea and she <laughs> didn't have for an hour. And they made a deal that like, sh the woman from the Shaban would like, have loads of tea and she would have loads of butter. So they swap. And a week later, she came back with loads of butter. And they swapped and they just swapped and then they went back. And when they were getting the butter, they all, they all agreed that they were going to eat it all together and go to the same bed. But it was actually seaweed in the butter. Oh! So it didn't taste. Oh! Right. No, I didn't like that, no. No. Um, um, 
My dad, he was telling me a story about the rain that I just didn't rain really that he, I, I just remembered that and he had his dad told him my dad's dad um, and he said that there was this um, man who had hit a baby with him and he ha and I think he would bring a gun over and when, when a man stopped him because he had some stuff on him and the baby pulled the trigger off the gun and it was <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> and uh, they just looked at the baby <laughs> My my wife my wife is from uh, Ballin the Mallard, and her father was a customs man. That's what I, that's what she taught me. But the biggest thing they also you probably know around here is cattle. They had a lot of cattle here, yeah. And they used to do it in the market, didn't they? Used to sell the cattle, cattle for beef, yeah. And what happened was a lot of the cattle was, cattle wasn't allowed over the border either. Oh my God. So what they used to do was they'd tip off the police officer. There's a cattle going across the border, at, I don't know, you know, somewhere. <laughs> right? So all the police officers would rush to that spot to catch the people who were taking the cattle over. And there'd be one old mangy cow standing there. And what happened was that they were taking the cattle over in a different spot. But whilst all the police officers were on that one, they were slipping it over on this side. <laughs> so, there were a lot of good games to play. I mean, even caps, you know, fabric caps were banned at one point, you know. And one, one chap who stuck it on this child's head and said, keep it on there, you won't be searched, you'll be all right. But unfortunately, he stuck his head out of the window on the, in the train <laughs> and the cap just blew away. <laughs> what was under the cap? Nothing. He just was, it was this lovely cap he bought and he wanted to keep it and he didn't want to give it over to the customer's man. But unfortunately it ended up probably on a cow and that was passing by and then we Yeah. Soldiers in Castle Archdale, yeah. Um, we had a barracks in Bundoran, didn't we? And the soldiers used to also travel up and down the line. They also <coughs> used the train a lot. Yeah. Um, at the railway station, smoking sort of like um, in having similar sort of because I do I know a few people that do it. Like because the sweets are so expensive, we. And buy sweets in the shop before we go to the cinema, and then they hide them in the bag. Yeah, that's right. She's a smuggler. 
That's right, that's right. No, you're right, you're right there. No, but, and that's it. No, 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 it's right, they're right, because I went to cinema, it was an awful price for these things. But, and I, no, I said to Violet, I want to buy a can of Coke before I go in there. Cinema, you know, the two No, we don't, we, don't, uh, we don't think this is a good idea, really. All it's right. a bit naughty. You can't do it, no? No, no, can you can't do it. All right, so I'll leave it out then. Don't do it. Leave it out, so. <laughs> You're outnumbered there. Yeah. The truth is coming out. You're outnumbered. I just want to be a very young girl. I just want to be a young girl. So you all knew really a lot about the railway without even really. <coughs> didn't you? Yeah. yeah. They know a lot about it, don't they? Yeah, they're going to ask me anything else, or is that it? Have we done it all? Much about it. Most people in the area are given one day off a week. That's all they were given. It still happens in Edinburgh, that's why the shop's shut and whatever. Um, and they would take the train in the morning up to Bundoran and then return in the evening. It's a nice way to get away from it because they did work really, really hard in those days. Um, did the customsmen get wages or was their wages what they what the, what No, they got good wages, they got very good wages as well. So they got what they got the contraband, what called contraband. They've got the goods from the people, and then they also got that as well. Yeah, <coughs> they, they did. But I mean, that's why when you, on the video where you saw it being searched, the man's being searched, they lifted the tip of a cap up because a lot of people would put stuff under their under their hat and hope that nobody looked there. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't it be easier for a woman to smoke a cycle because? She could do things where she says she's pregnant and she can um, like do a put a wig on. Yeah, yeah, I guess it would. Yes, yes it would. And she'll, she's also got the baby as well. So she could quite, quite easily do it. And that's why the women did do it. Because the men had come home from work on the fields and they'd say, where's my dinner? Well, you know, what are you going to do? If you've got no, you know, no tea. Why do people take like, just tea? Just tea, isn't it? Just the tea. I mean, I don't know, but the nuns must have felt it as well to be carrying it, really. But a lot of pilgrims that came through here obviously were fasting, weren't they, ready for the pilgrimage? But so they'd buy their drinks here rather than food. But they'd be on the fast as they came through. Not allowed really, but I'm sure they did. I think that's probably the case. I think they used the powers that they had, and I'm sure that they didn't suffer, let's put it that way. I bet they weren't without a cup of tea and all you know. Why did they put the man who like owned the, like, the station, why did he want? I guess because it was sold off cheap, it was cheap, it was left in ruins for a time. I used to be Lord's Hotel. That's right. And um, the, like now it's like really quiet and stuff. But it was and busy wasn't it before? She was saying when she was younger every night it used to be packed, yeah. jammed yeah, and yeah. you'd never see your dad till the next morning because it was so busy and um, you know the way you do floods hotel you saw the photograph on there didn't you of them out there yeah. outside yeah and we still have an old photograph of it when it used to be but there it must have been the old rooms but now we use it as an attic and my dad was clearing it out and stuff and he found this big massive old Cut and it's like a really antique black one, and it's really good. Oh, okay. But Flood's Hotel was the main place to stay. If you were travelling to the pilgrimage, especially if you wanted to stop over for the night, it was Flood's Hotel where you'd go. You didn't know that was the main place where they all gathered. Yeah. Um, how much were the tickets cost for a family of? I don't know. He, uh, he, Paddy, Paddy was talking about it on there. It was a few shillings, so like something like five pence in our money. It wasn't a lot of money to us, but to them. You see, also, if, if everyone can tell the time, 
we take it for granted, we can tell the time. This is another thing that the railway did. The farmers used to tell the time by looking at the sun, where the sun was in the sky, and that was the time of the day. When the train came round, they started timing what time it was by the train. So they always knew if the train came through at such and such time, it was 10 o'clock. It was 12 o'clock. They always knew, and they, they took the day by the time of the train. <laughs> Um, I was reading the book um, by Jackie Wilson, and it was about a little girl she had to go into, like, I don't know what it was called, it was like a hospital, <coughs> it was like the olden days, and because her mother, I think she had died or something, and she, she got a coin from uh, one of her family, and she had both <coughs> the things, but the people there, they took away all her things and she hid the coin in her mouth and the woman was like washing her and cutting her hair and she had the coin in her mouth for like <coughs> the whole day. Yeah. It's amazing what people will do when they have to do it, isn't it really, when you think about it. Right, I think that's every gender thing anybody else wants to ask. But no, your Pettigo was the centre of the smuggling because it's the border and this is where it happened so um, there were a lot of dodgy people about yes how many people would be at the station to get a train oh in the summer because in the winter it was dead in the summer during between june and august isn't it for the pilgrimage you should know that you know that yeah it would be sometimes 600 people a day coming through so you need two engines to pull it the carriages were so long, so you would have loads and loads of carriages and horses, and then later on loads of horses <coughs> to take them from here, up the way. Come back to you, yeah? How many people, how many people could fit in, like, the train? Well, in them days, the trains aren't like they are now. <coughs> they were... Um, first class, second class and third class. If you were third class, you were poor, and you went in that side. First class was the top top people. They didn't want to mix with the common people at the bottom there. And um, the carriage you'd walk on, and there'd be like a room, and, um, and an alleyway between them. That's all it was, that's how it was. So in a carriage, you could hold four people normally. <laughs> Yeah, I still quite I can still quite remember the old trains. They used to have separate compartments all the way along, not like it is now one big space. They were very separate in between. Yeah. Um, how many people would it take would it take in to operate like the one train and like how much coal would they use? <coughs> loads, yeah. loads. You'd need somebody to stoke what called stoke the engine, which would be shoveling the, the coal in. And then you'd need the engine driver. And then you'd have the porter walking up and down the train, getting tickets. So, I don't know, you'd probably get 10 people working there all together on the little station. Loads. Loads. They were constantly shoveling it in because um, I've seen it done it and it's a hot, dirty job. It's not a nice job at all. And where are the trains now? They've all been sold off or broken down and melted would down. Would they be around like in a skeleton or Ireland or Pedigo somewhere? There would be. There could be some, yeah, there could be an old shed somewhere. Um, could be in a museum. Could be in, no, it could be in a museum. It might be in Belfast. I'm not sure where they went, to be honest. I'm sure we could find, I suppose I could find out about like, that. But a lot of them were just smashed up. Some were obviously sold off to Ireland. To be, because obviously Ireland still has its rail network, so they were sold off to them mainly. They were literally got rid of as soon as they physically could. No. And then your then your lorry would have been checked, stripped down. Everything. And <laughs> yes. um, my auntie Susan, she lives in England and. And she's a principal at school, and um, one of her friends, a teacher at that school, and 
they were on the train, I think it was the tube or something, and they forgot to buy their tickets. And when they went back, the man asked for the tickets, and they didn't know what to do, and then um, they got across without having to pay, because they, had, um, they were like, we are principals and teachers, and we usually do not have have to go through all of this, so just let Ooh. us through. And they let them through because they were principals and teachers. Mm. Very lucky they were, weren't they, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, would water have been counted as a contraband? No. Yes. Yes. No. <coughs> no. You could have that. And what were you allowed to bring over? Oh, there's loads of lists. There's a long list of stuff and stuff that you couldn't, like you say, there's some. Wellies, for example, they were rubber. That was that was banned. Um, screws, iron. That was that was difficult. There's a huge list, huge list of stuff that you couldn't bring over. So the farmers used to hide it under the hay, you know, on the carts. Mm. They'd hide it under there to hopefully get it through. So. Can't you bring over? Hmm? Can't you? What? Like, were you allowed to bring over? Very small list of stuff you were allowed. Not an awful lot, I'm afraid. Not without paying. You could bring it, but they'd expect you to pay. You'd have to stand on that bridge and declare, say, look, I've got this, this, this and this. And they'd say, right, well, you've got to pay us this money. If you don't pay us this money, then you're not coming over. Sorry. You can come over, but I'm just keeping your butter over here. The customs hut is just down there, isn't it? The little building, the little green building, yeah. that's it. So, um, yeah, they wouldn't let you over. Sorry. If you looked a bit dodgy, you know, a bit shifty, then they'd have you there. And that's why they were always down at the station checking people coming in and off the train. And because that train crossed the border twice, they'd actually lock you into your carriage to make sure that you couldn't um, take it over the border. There was no way you could swap it because they'd lock you in when they crossed the border. People from Northern Ireland did they have to pay um, if they were buying stuff in like, the Royal Public Library? Yes, and vice versa, the other way around. <coughs> yeah, because some was allowed here and some wasn't allowed here. Some was allowed over the border. Yeah. And like somebody said over here, yeah. if you had one thing and your friend over the border had another, people would swap, try and swap stuff. That's right, and she had it in her rucksack. She was coming from school and they hid it in her rucksack from school. Yeah. So, um, yeah. They were all at it on the road. Yeah, so when you go down to the station now, you'll, you might be able to imagine it, just how, how it used to be. Very, very busy. Yes? Um, what, did the girl who brought over the toaster and just in case um, get caught? No. No, thank goodness she didn't. So all was well at the end of the day. And all that came, as I say, all that came because somebody decided to put a border between Ireland. Um, and that was it then. There was one rule for one and one rule for the other. So, um, but as I, here, you used to, generally you all know, you used to have a horse fair here as well, as well as in Belik. And they used to sell horses here. They used to bring horses in and trade horses on fair days. And uh, on the hill, they would race, they'd run the, the horse up and down the road to see whether it was lame or limping. So that was a big trade here as well, they bring bringing their horses. Would the horses, like, would, would, would they smuggle like, the horse and give some of the cow and they yeah. would have all Yeah, yeah. And obviously there were big celebrations on St Patrick's Day, they'd come over here as well. So there's a lot of people, an awful lot of people here coming and going, you know. The, the fairs were stopped, I was told, because of the mess. You know, the mess of the animals on the streets. Yeah.